You have clicked on this video most probably because you want to learn how to use variables inside the Figma in order to create realistic prototypes. And I promise you if you watch this video until the end, you're going to learn a lot about them. And in fact, most probably this video is going to be the last tutorial that you need to watch. The first part of this video, I'm going to explain everything that you might need to know about the variables. And in the second part, I'm going to work on the case study in order to show you how you can use variables to create prototypes in practice. So get sure to watch this video until the end. My name is Kia and here is Akimo. Welcome back to my channel. Let's start by answering the very first basic question. What are the variables? Variables are the entities that we can set and store some values in them. Now let's see how we can create variables inside the Figma. One of the ways is to use the local variable panel in order to create the variables. If you click somewhere empty on the canvas, in the design panel in the right side, you can see this local variables option. If you click on the icon next to it, which is the setting icon, you can open the local variables panel. You will see this button which says create a new variable. And if you open that you will see four different variants of the variables that you can create which brings me to the next point which kind of variables do we have in the figma as you can see here we have four different variables at this very moment that i'm making this video in the figma the first type of the variables are the string variables which we can store string values inside them basically characters and words. Number variables are the second type of the variables. We can store any type of number inside them. The next type of variables are the colors, which is very simple again. We can store basically our colors inside this type of the variable. And the last type of the variables are the Boolean variable, which basically we can set only two different values, true or false yes or no. For now, we have these four different type of variables, which I hope later on in new updates, we get more options as well, such as fonts. So now we are familiar with different types of variables. So we can just create a new variables by clicking or selecting one of these type of variables. And then we will see that the new variable is appearing inside our variable panel. We can easily rename the variable by just double clicking on its name and then set the initial value by just clicking the input next to this variable and then type in the value that we would like to assign to it. One of the very cool feature of the Figma in the variable section is that we can create different modes for the variables, which will let us to assign different values for only one variable. So a variable can have different values at the same time. And then later on, we can switch between different values by just switching between different modes. To create different mode, we can click on the plus button here, and then we can rename the mode to whatever we need to have in our design. There are many features that will help us to organize our variables. One of them is that we can define the scope of usage of each variable individually. The only thing that we need to do is that we need to select the variables that we would like to set or define the scope of usage, and then open the setting panel by clicking on the setting icon next to the variable and then here in this panel, you can see that we can say where we can use this variable inside our design file. The second feature that will help us to organize our variables is that we can group them in a specific group and then rename the groups in a way that help us to understand the structure of our variables. We can select multiple variables and then right click on them and then group them. This will increase the findability of the variables by far. But sometimes we would like to create totally different variables which we cannot group them in the same set. In that case, we can create new collections. We just need to click on the collection name on top of the menu and then create a new collection. In the new collection, we can define different variables and we can have different type of modes. All features will help us to kind of organize our variables. But before we go further with the next topic, I would like to also mention another feature and another functionality that will help us to organize our system or the design system that, that we are creating using the variables. And this feature is about possibility of nesting variables inside the variable list. So basically we can connect one variable to the value of another variable. By hovering on the value input, we will see this icon, which when we click on it, we will open the list of our variable. And if you select one variable there, we basically kind of connect the variable or the value of that variable to this value variable as well. And why nesting is so important? Just imagine if we want to define a color palette for our design, we might have a primary color, secondary color, we might have a bunch of other colors in our design system. So basically we can define a bunch of variables variables in order to store the colors of our color palette. And then imagine if we want to create a variable which is going to define the color of the edge 
H1 text. And in case we want to have the primary color for the H1 text as well, then we can just nest the same value or the same variable for this one as well. In that case, if we change the primary color, it will automatically change the H1 uh, text color as well. So nesting is very important thing when it comes to uh, kind of creating very complex design systems. As I said before, we can uh, kind of connect our variables to specific um, properties of the specific elements. And the amazing thing about the Figma is that we, now we can create complex logic using the conditional prototyping and writing expression in order to manipulate the value of that variable. Okay, to understand this topic that how we can create more realistic uh, prototypes in Figma using the variables, I'm gonna work on a case study, as I said before. I got one message on my Instagram in which someone asking me to create a form including three text input. The first one is the the text input that the user is going to enter his or her GPA. The second input is the one that the user is going to write down the percentage of the level of difficulty. And the last input is going to be the percentage of the educational level. And then we need to do this simple mathematical calculation and then show the result to the user. Okay, let's start by designing the user interface of the form that we would like to prototype. First, I'm gonna make a new frame and then pick up the text tool and write down a placeholder inside the canvas. In this step, we can apply the auto layout on this text layer using the combination key shift A. Let's increase the padding from all direction by 10 pixel. Now I'm gonna increase the width of whole element to something around 300 pixel. Now I'm gonna add the background color and increase the border radius to eight pixel. So our text input is ready. Now I would like to create a new variant of the same text input for the active state. So I'm going to duplicate the same element and then add a border to the new variant. Now I'm gonna select both of these elements and then convert them to the component set. Okay, now it's time to create our very first variable. I'm gonna make a new number variable. I rename it to the text input. Now I'm gonna get back to the text input component that we made and then select the text layer in both variants and then connect the variable that we made to these two texts by clicking on the icon here in this properties panel and selecting the variable that we made. Now I'm gonna make the first interaction, the one that when the user click on the text input it will change the element or a state to the active one. So I'm gonna open up the prototype panel and then select the first variant and connect it to the second one. I'm gonna set the trigger of this interaction on click and set the interaction type on change to. Let's switch the animation type to the smart animation. So this is going to be the text input which user need to be able to write down and enter a number into it. So now it's time to work on the interaction which will make this possible. I'm gonna select the active state or active variant of this component and create a new interaction in the prototyping panel. I'm gonna set the trigger of this interaction on key or gamepad and I'm gonna choose the key of the keyboard that is going to activate this interaction. Keys of the keyboard that is going to activate this interaction it's going to be the number pad, basically. The first interaction is going to be for the first key, which in this case is going to be the number one. I'm gonna set the interaction type and set variable. Then I'm gonna set the value of the text input variable to value of the text input variable multiplied by 10 plus one. I need to make the same interaction for all the numbers and the keypad of my keyboard, basically from one to nine. The logic is going to be the same. So as I said before, in this prototype, we will have three different uh, text input, which user can enter different values to each of them. And then we need to use the value that the user enter in order to run the mathematical calculation. To do so, I need to create two more mode for the variable that we have. We use the first mode to store the GPA. The second one is going to be for difficulty level. And the last one is going to be for the educational level. Now I'm gonna add three instances of the text input component into my frame. Select the first one and then switch the mode for this element to GPA. I'm gonna do the same thing for the second text input, but this time I'm going to switch the mode to difficulty level. And as you can guess, for the third one, I'm going to do the same and switch the mode to educational level. Now we can add some other user interface elements such as the label for the text input and a button which will run the calculation. Also, we need to create a new variable in which we're gonna store the result. I add a new text layer in my frame and then connect the value of this text layer to the result variable. There's only one step left. We want that when the user click on the calculate button, we run the mathematical calculation. We need to create a new interaction for this button. I'm gonna set the trigger of interaction on click and then interaction type on set variable. I set the value 
of the result variable to the value of the text input variable in the GPA mode multiplied by 10 plus the value of the text input variable in the difficulty level mode multiplied by 0 0.25 plus the value of the text input variable in the educational level this time multiplied by 0 0.25. Of course, we can write down different mathematical logic and operations here as well. Let's run the prototype. Now, as you can see, I can write down and enter a number into the first text input, which is for the GPA, and then for the second input, which is for the difficulty level, and the same for the last text input. And if I click on the calculate button, we will see the result here on the screen. So that was it for this video. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if it was so, please don't forget to like it and subscribe to my channel. Let's learn together and see you in the next video.